what is the domain of the function root 3x minus 6 we know that domain of any root we should satisfy that the function below the root should be greater than or equal to zeros for all the values so 3x minus 6 should be greater than or equal to 0 so 3x is greater than 6 after moving negative 6 to the other side as positive dividing both terms by 3 so x is greater than 3 if you want it to uh, greater than 2 if you want it to represent it on the number line here is 2 and the value is closed since it's a greater than or equal and the number greater than 2 so it's 2 to infinity so it's 2 close to infinity open so we are going to choose b v is equal 7i plus 2j minus 2k and use equal 4i plus 3j minus k and I wanted to find the dot product between u and v to find the dot product between u and v we multiply 7 by 4 and we add the answer to 2 times 3 the i j component and we multiply negative 2 by negative 1 so it's 28 plus 6 plus 2 which is equal to 28 plus 8 which is equal to 36 so the final answer is c 36 if the measure of two inner angles of a triangle are 110 and 40 let's sketch the triangle one of the angle is 110 and one of the angle is 40 110 and 40 is 150 so the third angle is equal to 30 degrees which of the following cannot be the measure of the exterior angle let's find the exterior angle the exterior angle to 40 is 140 degrees and the exterior angle to 110 is 70 degrees and the exterior angle to the angle 30 is 150 so it could be 70 it could be 140 it could be 150 but it cannot be 50 degrees a polygon with inner angle equal to 108 how many sides are there it's supposed to be a regular polygon a regular a regular polygon with inner angle 108 if we have an inner angle of measure 108 and I wanted to find the number of the side we divide 360 by the exterior angle by the measure of the exterior angle the exterior angle for this polygon is 180 minus 108 so it's a 360 divided by 72 which is equal to five sides and if you know directly that in the pentagon that each interior angle is equal to 108 you can choose 5 directly which of the following trigonometric operations equals to 3 when the angle is equal to 72 is it tan theta or 3 cosine 5 theta or 3 sine 5 theta or 3 tan 5 theta we know that 5 theta is equal 5 multiply 72 which is equal to 360 degrees and we also know that sine 360 is equal to 0 and cosine 360 is equal to 1 so the right answer is b as it's a 3 multiply cosine 360 times 1 is equal to 3 but tan 72 is not equal to 1 and tan 360 it doesn't exist which statement describe the location of the circle correctly I don't know the center and the radius of this circle so I need to rearrange it in form of equation of a circle so it's gonna be x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 10y plus 18 is equal to 0 so it's gonna be x minus 3 half of the 6 square minus square of 3 which is equal to 9 plus y minus half of the 10 which is 5 minus 5 square which is 25 plus 18 is equal to 0 so it's x minus 3 square plus y minus 5 square negative 9 and negative 25 is negative 34 negative 34 
added to 18 is equal to negative 16. So when you move it to the other side, it's going to be 16. So the center of the circle is 3 and 5, and its radius is equal to 4. By small sketching, the point 3 and 5 lies in the first quadrant, and the radius 4 means that the whole circle will be in the first quadrant, but its radius here is 3 and here is 5, right? With radius 5, you will not intersect the x-axis, but with radius 3, you will cut the y axis so it's in the first quadrant but intersect the y axis the last term in the binomial 1 plus 3i to the power of 6 as we know that the, this binomial is give me seven terms as it's a power of 6 and the last term is positive 3i to the power of 6 and 3 to the power of 6 is equal to 729 i to the power of 6 i to the power of 6 is i to the power of 4 multiply i to the power of 2 i to the power of 4 is 1 and the i power 2 is negative 1 so it's 729 multiplied by negative 1 which is equal 729 negative value so the right answer is b find the average rate of change of the function 2x squared minus 3x minus 4 and the rate of change here is the same as the slope of the function so at the point x is equal 3 and 5 so you have the point at x is equal 3 and the point at x is equal to 5 and to figure out the slope you need to find f of 3 and f of 5 f of 3 you are going to replace x with 3 so 3 bar 2 is 9 9 times 2 is 18, 18 minus 9 is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5, and f of 5 is equal, 2 times 5 is square, minus 3 times 5, minus 4, and 5 is square is 25, times 2 is 50, 50 minus 15 is 35, 35 minus 1 is 31, so the average rate of change is equal f of 5 minus f of 3 so 31 minus 5 over 5 minus 3 again so 31 minus 5 is 26 divided by 2 which is equal to 13 so the rate of change is equal to c find the area of the triangle whose coordinates are 0 and 0 negative 2 and 8 this is a small sketch for the triangle and 4 and 8 so we can find easily the length of the base of the triangle it's from the point negative 2 to the point 4 and the height which is from the point 0 to the point 8 so the length of the base is from negative 2 to 4 which is equal to 6 and the height from the origin to the point 8 which is equal to 8 so the area is half base by height so it's half by 6 by 8 which is equal to 24 so the right answer is A what is the measurement of any exterior angle of equilateral triangle equilateral triangle it's an triangle that its three sides are equal and each interior angle is equal to 60 degrees. So the measure of the exterior angle is equal to 120. What is the cross product between the two vectors u1, negative 2 and 0 and v4, 0 and negative 1? To find the cross product between u and v, we need to form a matrix it's order 3 by 3 the first row is i j and k u its components are 1 negative 2 and 0 and j are 4 0 and negative 1 to find the determinant of this matrix i will form determinant in a matrix in terms of i minus another matrix 2 by 2 in j plus another matrix in terms of k how we can find the one in i by cancelling the first row with the first column so it's negative 2 0 
0 and negative 1 and to find the second one we are going to cancel the second row with the second column so the remainder will be 1 0 4 and negative 1 1 0 4 and negative 1 and to figure out the third one we are going to cancel this one so it's 1 negative 2 4 and 0 and then we figure out the component or the value in terms of i so it's going to be negative 2 times negative 1 which is equal to 2 minus 0 by 0 is 0 minus 1 by negative 1 is negative 1 minus 0 by 4 is 0 in j plus 1 by 0 is 0 minus negative 2 by 4 is negative 8 so it's going to be positive 8 in k so it's 2i and negative times negative is positive 1j we don't write the 1 plus 8k so the right answer is b find the coordinates of the parallelogram sorry the given is the coordinates of the parallelogram hklm hklm what is the coordinates of the point of intersection between the parallelogram diagonal we know that the intersection point of the diagonals is bisecting each other so let's assume that the point is x here x is the mid point of mk or hl so let's figure out the midpoint of H mk m is negative 4 and 4 and k is 2 and negative 3 so the midpoint is equal negative 4 plus 2 divided by 2 x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 4 and negative 3 divided by 2 so it's negative 2 divided by 2 and 1 over 2 which is equal to negative 1 and half so the right answer is b if you throw a pair of dice what is the probability that the sum of the faces will be 12 we know that if we throw a dice we have six choices in the first one and six choices in the second one so the total outcomes is equal to 36 the probability that you have sum of 12 is only one pair that the first face will be 6 and the second face will be 6 because 6 plus 6 is equal to 12 there is no more two values that their sum will be 12 so the probability of getting sum of 12 is equal 1 out of 36 so the right answer is C and in institute want to pick two students out of 20 students what is the probability of those two students to being Omar and Hamza by the way names doesn't matter he may just ask for two students name doesn't change anything imagine that you have a class out of 20 students and you are going to choose out of these 21 students the probability of pick these students by name is 1 out of 20 as these students represent 1 but while you are going to choose the second students you are choosing out of 19 out of 19 and you also are going to take only one student <clears throat> out of this 19 so it's one by one which is equal to 1 and 20 multiplied 19 is 380 so the right answer is C what is the slope between two points the slope is the difference in y y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so it's 1 minus 6 divided by 1 minus negative 2 so it's negative 5 divided by 3 so the right answer is b by throwing a die what is the probability of getting number that less than 3 number less than 3 in 1 and 2 or odd 1 3 and 5 so combine them together so less than 3 1 and 2 odd 1 3 and 5 so i'm going to choose 3 and 5 not repeat it the one again so how many choices four choices out of what out of six choices by dividing up and down by two it's two out of three it's two out of three a study was made on the various temperature inside the classroom during a week 
and the temperatures are 12, 11, 13, 13, 15, 19, and 59 values. What is the average? We know that the average is equal to sum of the values 12 plus 11 plus 13 plus 13 plus 15 plus 15 plus 19 divided by 7. Now, how I can do it without using calculator? So 15 and 15 is 30. 13 and 13 is 26. 11 and 19 is 20. And I have 12 divided by 7. So it's 26 and 30, 56. Plus 32 divided by 7. So it's 88 divided by 7. And the 88 divided by 7 is approximately... Sorry, I have a mistake. 11 and 19 is 30, not 20. So this is 98. And 98 divided by 7, 9 divided by 7 is 1, carry up 2, 28 divided by 7 is 4. So the temperature is 14. In the following geometric series, the first term is 8, second term is 9, third term is 9 over 2, and the fourth term is 27 over 8. I wanted to find the fifth term. To find the fifth term, I need to find the common ratio. So I'm going to divide 6 by 8. So 6 divided by 8 is 3 divided by 4. So each time you multiply by 3 over 4. Each time you multiply by 3 over 4. So 27 divided by 8, you are going to multiply by 3 divided by 4. So 8 by 4 is 32 and 27 by 3 is 81. So the right answer is B. In an arithmetic sequence, the ninth term is 76 and the 10th term is 81. So if the ninth term is 76 and the 10th term is 83, so the common difference is 83 minus 76, which is equal to 7. So each time, starting from the first term, you are adding 7 until you reach 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, 9 is 76. You wanted to subtract each time 7, 7, 7 and so on, it's okay. If you know that the first term is equal a1 plus n minus 1d or an is equal to a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So that ninth term is equal a1 plus 8 times the common difference so the ninth term is 76 is equal to the first term plus 8 by 7 is 56. So the first term is 76 minus 56, which is equal to 20. So the first term is 20. What is the function g of x that resulted from translating the absolute value? We know that the graph of the absolute value is letter v passes through the origin. Three units up and four units to the right. So the center right now is three and four. So three inside the bracket should be negative. So I'm going to cancel B and D. And moving up four, it's a plus four. So the right answer is A. The right answer is A. As the vertex here, three and four. But notice that the vertex here is negative three and four. If x varies inversely with y, we stop here. Since x varies inversely, so x1 over x2 is equal to y2 over y1. And x is equal to negative 12, so this is x1. When y is equal to, so this is y1. Find the value of y, so he's looking for y2 when x2 is equal to 6. So negative 12 over 6 is equal to y2, the one I wanted to figure out, divided by 2. So, y2 is equal to 2 multiplied by negative 12 divided by 6, which is negative 24 divided by 6, which is negative 4. So, the right answer is D. 
Find the lowest common multiples of the polynomial 4x squared y bar 6 and 20x to the power of 3y to the power of 5. And lowest common multiple, it means that the number that will be divided by both of two terms. The lowest common multiples for 4 and 20 is 20. And x bar 2, x bar 3 is the greatest power, x bar 3. y bar 6 and y bar 5 is the greatest power, y to the power of 6. So it's a 20, x to the power of 3, y to the power of 6. If v is equal to negative 2, negative 1, and 6, and u is equal to b and 1, what is the value which make these two vectors orthogonal? And orthogonal means perpendicular. And to make two vectors perpendicular, so the dot product of them should equal to 0. So negative 2 multiplied by 2, so it's negative 4, plus negative 1 multiplied by b is negative b, plus 6 times 1 is equal to 6. So this sum is supposed to equal to 0. So negative 4 and 6 is 2, so 2 minus b is equal to 0, so b is equal to 2. So the right answer is d. Which of the following function is a continuous everywhere? For sure, if I am looking for a continuous function, I'm not going to choose a fractional function. Don't choose fraction. So I'm going to go to the polynomial one. Any polynomial one is a continuous one. One over x is not continuous at x is equal zero. And x minus 2 divided by x squared minus 4 is not continuous at two point at x plus 2 and x negative 2. So at x negative 2, it's not continuous. And the same here, 1 over x squared at x is equal 0, it's not continuous. So if you are looking for a continuous function, look for a polynomial 1, not a fraction, not a root. If 120 is equal to n factorial, then what is n minus 1 factorial? We know that 5 factorial is equal 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal 6 by 20, which is equal 120. So n is equal to 5. Now, n minus 1 factorial, so 1, 5 minus 1 factorial, which is equal to 4 factorial. So it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 6 by 4, equal to 24. So the right answer is C. Cosine 50 is equal to sine x. So what is the value of x? Cosine a is equal to sine b only in one case. If a plus b is equal to 90 degree. If they are sum up to 90 degrees. So the value of x here is equal to 90 minus 50. So it's equal to 40 degrees. So the right answer is C. Sine negative 150, we know that sine is an odd angle, sorry, an odd function. So sine of negative theta is the same as negative sine of theta. So sine of negative 150 is the same as the value of negative sine 150. The reference angle for sine 150 is the angle of 30. So it's the same as negative of the reference angle 30. And sine 30 is equal to half. So it's negative half. So the right answer is A. Another method of solving that if you don't know how to figure out the negative 150, so add to it 360. So it's the same as sine 210 in positive. 210 is lies in the third quadrant. And the sign in the third quadrant is negative. And the only answer is negative is the A. Only answer is negative is A. What is the largest number of line segment that could be drawn from five points not to fall in single segment? To form a line segment, you need to form two points, for example, AB. So you have five points, one, two, three, four, and five. And you are going to form from each two of them a line segment. So it's a 5 combined 2. Why it's not permutation? Because if it's AB, not the same as BA. So you are going to form from each two point two line segments. But he is asking for two lines, uh, only single line segment joining between any two. 
so 5c2 is 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial multiplied by the difference between 5 and 2 which is 3 factorial so it's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 by 2 by 1 by 2 by 1 so 2 by 1 2 by 1 3 5 times 4 is 20 20 divided by 2 is 10 so it's 10 line segments if if v is equal 4j and 4j it means that you are moving 4 here in the direction of i uh, j sorry so 0 and the vectors u is negative 3 and 1 negative 3 and 1 so here is the direction of the vector u negative 3 and 1 here is a right angle so I wanted to figure out what is the measure of the angle included between V and U. I can use the sketch by find, finding the measure of the angle here between the vector and the X axis 1 and negative 3. Or I can find the angle between the two vectors here is 4, here is 3 and 1 by finding the length of the sides or by using the cosine rule. Or we can apply the rule for the angle between the two vectors. It's inverse cosine of the dot product between u and v over the absolute value of v, of v and the absolute value of u. So it's inverse cosine of u dot v, which is negative 3 by 0 is 0, plus 1 by 4 is 4, over the magnitude of v, which is 4 squared, Multiply the magnitude of V, which is root 3 square plus 1 square. So, it's inverse cosine of 4 divided by 4 multiplied by root of 10. So, it's 1 over root of 10. By cancelling 4, it's 1 over root of 10. So, it's inverse cosine of negative inverse cosine of 1 over root of 10 which is not exist here so I think one of the values need to be corrected or this value is root of 3 if this value is root of 3 so this distance is root of 3 and tan of the angle here is equal 1 or sorry inverse tan of the angle or tan of the angle is 1 over root 3 so this angle theta is equal to 30 so the angle between the two component or the two vectors is 60 so I solve it with you with applying the rule and I solve it by changing the value. So what is the range of the function f of x is equal to absolute value of x minus 2 plus 4? From here we can find the vertex and the vertex is 2 and negative uh, 2 and positive 4. We change the value inside the bracket, we are taking the value outside. So by sketching the curve 2 and 4. Here is the point 2 and 4, 2 in the x-axis, 4 in the y-axis. And here is the curve. So the smallest value here for the curve is 4, and you are taking all the values up. And two is a and 4 is a closed value. So it's 4 as a closed value till infinity. So the right answer is what the right answer is C. Question number 30, find twice 5 and 2, 0 and 1. This is a matrix of order 2 by 2 plus the matrix 3, 2, negative 1 and 0. So I will multiply 2 by each term inside the matrix. So it's going to be 10, 0, 4 and negative 2 plus 3, negative 1, 2 and 0. So we're going to add the corresponding values. So 10 and 3 is 13. 0 and negative 1 is negative 1, 4 and 2 is 6, negative 2 and 0 is negative 2. So the right answer is D. The direction of the parabola y squared is equal 3 times x minus 3. Its direction, is it up, left, right or down? As we know that y squared is to the right and x to the power of 1 is to the left, 
it's gonna be right or left and since the coefficient of x is positive so it's open to the right it's open to the right what is the measure of an exterior angle of a regular octagon the measure of the exterior angle of a regular octagon octagon is eight sides and measure of the exterior angle of any regular polygon is equal to 360 multiplied the number of the side divided by the number of the sides so 360 divided by 8 divided by 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 180 divided by 2 is 2 divided by 2 is 90 90 divided by 2 is 45 why I did it like this for the students who are not allowed to use calculator so the answer is 45 if integral from 1 to k for the function x squared plus 5x dx is equal to 0 then what is the value of k? We know that the integral from a to b for any function with respect to, to x is equal to the integration substitution at b minus the integration substitution at a. So when a and b are equal, the difference between them will be zero. So if k is equal to 1, so the integral from 1 to 1 for any function will be 0. Look, of, look for the base 5 for x plus 1 plus log of base 5 for x minus. First, I will take the power above the bracket. So I can write it as log x plus 1 for base 5 plus log 5 for x minus log 5 for x plus 1 to the power of 2. In case of addition between two logs, I can write it as 1 log for a product between x and x1. And subtraction, it means that I'm going to find the quotient by dividing this by x plus 1 squared. Again, log a plus log b is the same as log a b and log a minus log b is the same as log a divided by b so let's simplify x plus 1 with 1 of the power so it's going to be log 5 for x divided by x plus 1 so the right answer is a 3 log 5 for x can be written as log 5 for x to the power of 3 minus log 5 for y to the power of 4 after moving the power to y and the power to x and the power to z so plus log 5 for z square this is subtraction but this is addition so I should take minus as a highest common factor first so it's going to be log 5 for y to the power 4 minus not taking this one I can write it as rearrange it so log 5 for z to the power of 2 minus log 5 for y to the power 4 that will be easier as addition is going to change into multiplication so x bar 3 z bar 2 and subtraction it's going to change into division so y to the power of 4 so the right answer is log 5 for x bar 3z squared over y bar 4 which is equal to a the polar form for the given equation this is equation of a circle its center is 0 and 0 and its radius is root of 4 which is equal to 2 because it's in the form of x minus h squared plus y minus k square is equal to r square which of the following is represent the equation its radius is equal to 2 or we can say that x is equal r cosine theta and y is equal r sine theta so x square is r square cosine square theta plus y minus 2 which is r sine theta minus 2 squared is equal to 4 so r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta minus first by second by 2 which is 4 r sine theta plus 4 is equal to 4 by moving this 4 to the other side so it's equal to 0 
and taking r square as a highest common factor and cosine square plus sine square is equal to 1 so r square minus 4 r sine theta is equal to 0 by taking r as a highest common factor so it's r minus 4 sine theta is equal to 0 so r minus 4 sine theta is equal to 0 or r is equal to 0 so r is equal 4 sine theta so the right answer is C. The set of zeros of the given function lies in which interval? So I need to solve this equation to figure out where the set of zeros. So root of x squared minus 6 is equal to 6. So by squaring both terms, x squared is equal to 6, 6 squared minus 6 is equal to 6 squared. So x squared is equal to 36 plus 6. So x squared is equal to 42. So x is equal positive and negative root of 42. And root of 42 lies between root of 36, which is equal to 6, and root of 49, which is equal to 7. So it's between 6 and 7. Find the inverse of the matrix uh, 5, 3, 3, and 2. And to find the inverse of a matrix a a b c and d its inverse is one divided by the determinant and change the places of a and d change the sign of b and c so it's one divided by five by two is ten minus three by three is nine and change the places of five and two change the sign of three and three so it's 2, negative 3, negative 3, and 5. 2, negative 3, negative 3, and 5. I think here's the answer, but it's not without negative 5. It's a positive 5. So the right answer is A. Let's erase it. So the right answer is A. Sine 60 plus theta cosine theta minus cosine 60 plus theta sine theta. This is sine cosine cosine sine. So this is the rule of. So sine cosine cosine sine. It's the same as the rule of sine A minus B. And the value of A is 60 plus theta. And the value of B is theta. So it's a sine 60 plus theta minus theta, which is equal to sine 60. And sine 60 is equal to root 3 over 2, which is equal to D.